the people that work at PRS guitars. And I'm 59. Uh, and basically, this event, I didn't plan. This event was planned by Jack and Judy and Bev and the entire marketing team, and they were the ones that came in and said, we think we know how to do this event, we think we know what the right people are, we need to... And basically, you have to let go. And I want to uh, also acknowledge Jean. Jean, hold your hand up. Jean is in charge of this thing over here. Right? Right. 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 And you have to let go, you have to let go and let people fly. You have to do it. And there's a lot of people in this business that are not just flying, but doing it really, really well. And you need to know that it used to be in the beginning, you know, we would do everything that I had planned. And now my job is to stay completely out of the way of the people that know what they're doing and just say the things that I'm positive won't work. Otherwise, I've got to just let it go. And my wife said to me, there was a beautiful vibe between all the PRS employees and all the people in the building today. I know there was a beautiful vibe in this tent all day from the people that came and the, and the employees. There's been a real gentleness. I don't think anybody's had a bad attitude all day. And the musicians last night were ecstatic about Woo! what happened last night. Yeah! Absolutely ecstatic. So, with that, I want to tell one more story. John McLaughlin called me 30 years ago and told me that one day I'd be good enough to make him a guitar. And literally the phone went click. And then I, 25 years ago, he called me and he said, I'm in Thailand, call my accountant, click. And then he called me 20 years. And literally every five years, for 30 years, he called and said, one day you're gonna be good enough, click. I mean, literally they used truncated phone calls, right? Uh, mostly he hung up. You think I'm going to hang up on John McLaughlin? Are you out of your effing mind? <laughs> right, so, he comes to Frankfurt every year and looks at the guitar. Because he's a, he's a guitar player. He, this is what he uses to make music on, right? And he sits down and he goes, and, I, and he picks up a violin guitar that we had sent. Uh, one of the Pauls 28, that whole thing. And he picks it up and he looks up at me, he's looking up and he goes, oh no. And I finally towered over him. And when John plays, he takes your breath away. Literally, he can play electric guitar without any amp and you can't breathe when he plays. He does something that's just out of, out of bounds in so many ways in a good way, right? And he, and he plays the guitar and I can't breathe and I literally towered over him. I said, are you finally going to order a guitar? And he went, yeah, I'll order it. <laughs> so what do you want? So he wanted, da -da 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 -da. and we made it, and we sent a picture of it to him, and he waved it off. He said, no, that's not what I want. I want this, 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 this. So we remade it. He waves it off. He says, no. Nah. Okay. Make the third one. And Paul Miles and I are working on it. The whole private stock team is working on this thing. And we find, we sent it to, we sent a picture of it. He says, "Now you've got it." The email, the email says, "Now you've got it." I'll see you in Frankfurt. So I walk in, I walk in, and I put the and Jay Hayes is there, right? And I, I left the guitar in the booth in a gig bag, and John wasn't there. We had to go play at the Meatball Awards, and John walks into the booth. And he goes, "Where's Paul?" He says, "He's not here, but here's the guitar." John says, "I don't know, I don't know." Where is he? And remember, this, he's been planning on this guitar for 30 years, 32 years, 31 years at this point. He puts it over his shoulder, and, he's, and he heads to the Meeple Awards, and he walks into the awards, we're rehearsing, and I'm standing next to the great guitar player from Texas, David Brisson. And John's standing, and he goes, hi, Paul, and, and David goes, <laughs> <laughs> because Here's John McLaughlin standing there, and my vision reference was the way that one of the ways that David cut his teeth, right? And John says, I'm here. I said, Okay, nice to see you, John. He says, I didn't want to. I said, You looked at the guitar, right? He said, No. I said, He said, I don't want to look at it until you were here, which has integrity inside of the building, right? And he sits down and he pulls it out and he goes, oh my God, I love it. 
Martin Simpson, David Grissom, me, and a whole bunch of other people all at dinner that night in tears. Not because he liked the guitar. Not because he had this guitar he's finally playing PRS or whatever, but because he had known the future for 30 years. It was the only Jedi Knight we ever met. He knew it was going to happen. I mean, literally, the guy knew the future. Just the same as when Miles, Miles went to him, he goes, uh, John, I hate to tell you this, but it's time for you to quit the band and start your own band. Miles Davis told him to quit, and he starts Mount Vishnu and changes. He decides they're going to play jazz in a rock band. And this thing called Jazz Rock shows up, right? And then here comes the Return to Forever right on their heels. And all the bitches, bitches Bruce started the whole thing. And, and um, so John then orders another guitar with the, the scene of Manhattan on the guitar. But he wants the Twin Towers on the guitar because that's when he fell in love with New York. And he doesn't have a guitar tech. He changes his own strings. He's never had a guitar tech. He's always been his own guy. And so he starts to name the instruments. Well, she's, I'm getting used to her. You know, and she, he thinks of them as alive things, right? And when he got done, he says, okay, I'll come to your event. So two years ago, he came and played for all you, right? And you got to see John's band which I found fascinating. And last night he played Ma Vishnu tunes with Jimmy Herring. Hello, I didn't get to see that in my lifetime, but I got to see it last night. And here is John, not, and he doesn't charge us. He just comes because he loves it. And he wouldn't leave last night because of how much he loved it. And there's, that is what you guys are doing for us. When you get on the blogs and you give good reports to the internet, when you are here and then spreading the word of what you saw, that's what John's doing, that's what Carl's is doing, that's what this whole family is doing. And from that's what, it's not just us. It's just 250 here, and then you've got a whole another thousand or two of people like you that come and help us. And from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so, so much. Somebody in the balls the size of St. Louis wants to speak. My name is Jim Hall. Okay. <laughs>